Bishuth Kala Kala Koshev Azeh, a few words of introduction. Yedidi Arav HaKoshev Vamufla Arav Reb Shreima asked, I should say a Shia on the Shabbos, and I was extremely reluctant. The uh, Shabbos are complicated, and the various sibis why it wasn't convenient for me, but Chazal say that a Baruch said to Moshe Rabbeinu, when discussing Shabbos, Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, Ad honor may antem to when of all of you, Kali Yisrael, refuse to listen to me. And Chazal say that although the ones, the perpetrators of the crime were others, but a Baruch said to Moshe Rabbeinu, may antem, all of you, including Moshe Rabbeinu. And what's Moshe Rabbeinu done wrong? He didn't know what he saw on Shabbos. He did nothing wrong on Shabbos, says the Chazal. Moshe Rabbeinu is guilty for not saying a Shia. If you would have prepared the oil properly, then they would have kept Shabbos better. So Chazal level at the person who's able and asked to say a Shia, a criticism if he doesn't say the Shia. So here we are, L'Kayim, the instructions of Yedidi Arav Reb and the wonderful people with him, the Chassam Seifer says on Pidrush, the Pesach says in Vayake, Lo Savaru Eish, Bechol Mosh Veseichem Beyom HaShabbos. Literal translation, do not make a fire on Shabbos, says the Chassam Seifer. The Eish refers to learning the Alochas of Shabbos, preparing for Shabbos, being knowledgeable in the Alochas, says the Pesach, Lo Savaru Eish Beyom HaShabbos. Don't wait till Shabbos till you start learning and discussing and being ma'ayan with a great big rizcha der Isa on Hilcha Shabbos. It's too late if you wait till Shabbos. The time for Savaru Eish, the time for discussion, and the time for in-depth analytical interpretation of the Shabbos is before Shabbos. That's what our great friends in the Torah projects of Good Yisrael have decided to do to spend the days before Shabbos, when we're able to learn with Zoom, being ma'ayin in the Shabbos properly. And the Chassan Seifer goes on to say something very precious. We know from Chazal that hachona before Shabbos, a person prepares before Shabbos, and he's zoicha to Misha Torah Ba'erev Shabbos, Yoichal B'Shabbos. And in its simple understanding, it means that if you prepared your chong before Shabbos and you have what to eat on Shabbos, says the Chasm Saifa, much more far reaching, says the Chasm Saifa, Mishatarach Ba'er of Shabbos. If you learned Hilcha Shabbos before Shabbos, if you put in effort to know Hilcha Shabbos well before Shabbos comes, Yechav Shabbos, a Kachboch sends a special Shefa of Parnosa which each and every one of us can do with right now and at all times, Yechal B'Shabbos. Kach Baruch said, Ve'ichinu, Klausro should prepare before Shabbos. Says the Chassam Seifer, what does this Pasuk mean? Ve'ichinu, prepare yourself with the Shabbos. No Hilchas Dosh Beir. Learn Hilchas Bishel. No Hilchas Binyan and oil on Shabbos. And for learning that, Kach Baruch promises you, Parnosa B'Shefa, Ve'ichinu, Yoichal B'Shabbos. This is our opportunity, Rabbi Yisai. At times, when everybody wants a special bracha, the Kishboruch should show a manifestation of his great bracha for Shemir Shabbos, says the Chasm Soifa, you get it when you learn of the Shabbos. Rabbi Chaim Shulevit says, his cook, his view on what Shabbos is all about, says Rabbi Chaim Shulevit, the Kishboruch created the world that Adam Rishon wasn't expected to work. He's placed into Gan Eden, and without doing anything at all, he gets everything that he needs and everything that he wants. Malachim Tzolim Leibasa. Unfortunately, he did the chet of eating from the Eitz Adas, and he got a klala, b'zeyas apech ha lechem. You don't get anything if you don't work for it and spitz for it. Says Reb Chaim Shulevitz, this klala is Chal on six days of the week. Shabbos remains the way it was originally 
created and designed to be that a Kachbolchu provides the Parnassah without you need to do anything. You got to work to have Parnassah for six days of the week, but you don't need to work for Shabbos because Shabbos is part of that original bracha. We're still in Gan Eden when it comes to Shabbos. And the Chasm Saifa says, not only the Parnassah of Shabbos is on a Kachbolchu's Baruch responsibility, but if you work for Shabbos, and you learn the Shabbos properly to the best of your ability, then a Baruch Hu makes the brach of Shabbos overflow into the week, and we get Parnassa during the week, and we get Ashiras during the week in the Zchus of learning the Shabbos the way it's meant to be. Chayodim writes in his Sefer Zichotar Moshe that we all have to learn Alocha, and we have to learn the entire gamut of all Alochas that there are. In the Gantz of Shulchan Aruch says the Chayodam, but the most important halachas that a person needs to learn are Hilchah Shabbos. Hilchah Shabbos, when it comes to it on Shabbos, you're faced with the Shaila and you don't know where to turn, you don't know what to do. You've got to learn it properly, you've got to understand things well, and then it's possible to keep Shabbos properly. Not only that, but the Igli Tal wrote his whole safe on Melachas of Shabbos, and the Igli Tal says, that when a person learns Hilchah Shabbos, is Neshav in Shomayim, Kiilu Lomad Kol Kulo. Now, that's a major thing. We would all like to be included somehow in this Lomad Kol Kulo. When did we learn Kalim and Olus? And when did we learn many other parts of the Torah Kedusha? It says Igli Tao. If Shmiras Shabbos is Choshev, Kekol Kulo, then learning Hilchah Shabbos is Choshev, Kekol Kulo. So, Baruch Hashem, we have this incredible individual, Reb Shloyma, who says a Shia on any and every subject that there is in the entire Shas, Mamash Kala Kula. We are not able, all of us, to do that. But Lachal Apokas, when we learn at the Shabbos, is Nechshav Kiilu Lomad Kala Kula. And before we move on to the Halachas, I want to finish with just a marshal of the Dubna Magid when he discusses Shabbos. Dubna Magid says a marshal. There was a man who left his family behind in his shtetl and he traveled off to Varsha a long, long way away to make his fortune and was extremely successful. He set up a business in Varsha and he's making tons of money. But he can only run his business from Varsha. He has to choose. Either he's going to go back home to his shtetl and have no parnosa, or stay in Varsha, be away from the family, make a fortune. So he's staying in Varsha and he's making his money. But here I him. And a schnorra comes knocking on the door by the rich man. And the schnorra happens to come from his little shtetl. And the rich man opens the door, Kim Tarain, tell me, how's my family, how are my kids doing, how's my wife, what's news in the shtetl? And the Shnora says, listen, I- I'm here for a reason. Can you give me a, a ruble or not? No. He understands the Shnora, gives him his ruble, and the Shnora goes. And this rich man, poor fellow, he has this one person who's come from his own town, and he's able to hear all the news and catch up on what's going on in the shtetl and the family, and he's gone. He decides that next time I'm going to do better. A few days go by, and same Shnara comes again. Comes on Wednesday again, knocks on the door, and the rich man says, I really want you to tell me about my family and my kids. And the Shnara says, listen, you know, I came for a reason to town. I'm, I'm in Vash, I'm collecting money. Make a few pennies. I, time is money. I can't spend time schmoozing with you. So the Aisha says to him, tell me, how much is the maximum that you can make in a, in a day from schnorring in Vasha? So like that. 80 rubles. You can make 80 rubles on a very good day in Vasha. So the Aisha had Tomorrow I'm buying the day from you. I'm paying you 100 rubles and you ought to come to me tomorrow. No tirdus. No business, and we're going to schmooze about my family, 
about the Rabonis in town, about the news in town, the schmooze in town, everything going on. A deal is a deal. And the rich man is extremely excited. Tomorrow I'm going to hear everything. Davin's in the next minute. He's in the office already at nine in the morning. Gunished. Only doesn't turn up. 9.15, 9.30, quarter to 10, nothing happening. At 10 o'clock, he runs out of patience, goes looking for, where's this Schnorras staying? He finds him 10 o'clock in the morning, still in bed. He says, what, we have a deal? Today belongs to me? I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry. I've got a Davin Shachris still, I'll be along. Okay, goes back to the office and the Yoni goes to Davin Shachris. No, how long does Shachris take? Three quarters of an hour, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. He expects the Yoni to be along. Comes 12 o'clock and the Yoni hasn't turned up. So the rich man goes looking for him again. At 12.30 he finds him in the restaurant and he's enjoying a good breakfast and he's schmoozing with people. And the rich man goes over to him and he's furious and he says, what's this going on over here? I, I, I have an agreement with you, an arrangement that you're going to come and tell me. He says, listen, I, I, I've got to eat breakfast. This, today, says Deoni, every day I have a busy program because I'm collecting money. Today, it's already paid for the day. I don't need to go snoring today. So today is the one opportunity I can sleep in and I can schmooze over breakfast. He says, Deoni, what do you mean today's the opportunity to sleep in and to schmooze over breakfast? Parnassus is not paid for today. Parnassus is paid because I want you to spend your time with me, talking to me. Not because I want you to spend your time schmoozing over breakfast in the restaurant. During the week, we don't have enough time for the Rabbeinu Shlevim. Correctly so, never. With Avmacha Parnassus, we're running around. We have what to do. Fair enough. Says the Rabbeinu Shlevim. Vechinu, when Shabbos comes, Parnassus is my geshef. I'm going to provide you the Parnassah for Shabbos. Why is Hashem providing Parnassah for Shabbos? So that on Shabbos, you should dab him via mensch. You should sing Zmiris via mensch. You should go to Ashia via mensch. That's what the Rebbeinu Shem wants of a Shabbos. So Dubin Amagid, what are the Eden in, in Dubin do when it comes to a Shabbos? The Shabbos is paid for already back in Shborchu. I can read the paper. I can schmooze more. So Dubin Amagid, that's not what the Shabbos is dedicated for. That's not why Akash Baruch provides the food. Akash Baruch provides it because he wants us to dedicate the day to avoid us Hashem. So, in a bunch of Shabbat, each and every one of us, with Emerson, a chef of Kedusha and a chef of Parnassah, and to use the Shabbos the way it should be, and let us delve into Hilcha Shabbos as much as we're able to do right now. Now, the Inyanim we want to discuss today, a wide-ranging and, to a degree, complicated and many different protein. And I'm not even going to attempt to cover the issues from all the different angles. There's so much. And therefore, obviously, it's not shy for us to discuss anything. Aloch Lamaisa. Aloch Lamaisa, you've got to study a subject from all its different angles and consider everything, we're not discussing today Allah Maisa. Nor are we discussing today Hashkofa. Hashkofa is a major discussion and every situation is different and every individual is different and every Rabbonus is different. So we're not discussing Allah and we're not discussing Hashkofa. We're just analyzing and schmoozing and learning. Today is dedicated for schmoozing and learning. He does a shayla, Allah Maisa. For them, there's very major respected Rabbonim who are available and happy to advise us in Inyanim of Allah Maisa. So, before getting involved in our discussion, I'd like to mention a shayla. A Yid came to me last week. He represents a few Yid Nebuch who have difficulty with their sight. Some of them never completely blind. And we shouldn't know the difficulties that these people go through by day, on Shabbos, whenever. Everything is difficult for them. Learning is difficult for them. Communicating is difficult for them. And traveling around, getting around is extremely difficult. 
So he comes to me to my house this eve with his stick, and the stick is a very good implement for avoiding collision on ground level. So if there's anything on ground level, his stick will find it. However, more than once he's tripped, and the reason for this is because although the stick, he feels around in front of him with the stick and he knows nothing on the, on the ground, but there are things which are higher than ground level. The car sticks out at the back, above high ground level. His stick won't, of necessity, catch it, but he can go bashing into the car. And there can be other, there can be leaves, branches, anything can be sticking out into the way, and he's not going to know. So they've developed for blind people an incredible invention, a sonar smartwatch which is very simply taken the technology of submarines. Submarines under the ground, not shy for them to see anything. So how do they navigate and how do they make sure they don't go bashing into something in the depths of the sea? By sonar. Sonar is, in our simple language, echoes. It sends out echoes to the submarine. Its echoes come back. If it hits something dense, then the echo comes back, and the closer it's it, the stronger the echo comes back. And that's translated into information for telling the captain of the submarine that there's something there, there's an object there, and you better get out of the way. So they've developed this sonar smartwatch, which the blind man wears on his arm, and it sends out sonar waves to the area in front of the blind man. It doesn't go all the way down to the ground. He'll still need his stick. But it covers Barach from his chin to his knees. And as he walks in the street, if there's something close to him, then his watch starts to vibrate and send him a message. The closer the object, the stronger the vibra vibrations. And he wants to know, in El Shabbos, is he allowed to wear this watch, which... Potentially, if he's going to be near something, then it's creating vibrations in his watch. And is this allowed on Shabbos? This is one of a plethora of Shilas in Hilcha Shabbos. And let us do things in a Masuradik Oifen. We start with Choylem. Choyle at home, Choyle in hospital. And he wants to be able to put the light on. He wants to be able to call a nurse anything which involves electricity. And Abshayim has already given a very erudite and deep shia about the general ashkofa in Alocha on electricity. And the assumption is that there's an Issa der Isa in activating something with electricity on Shabbos, whether that'll be uh, Mavir or Makiba Patish or Binyan according to the Chazanish. So we've got to try and change things. So the machshove is that we would like to do things through groma. Now, groma means that I did something which eventually led to a malacha happening. Groma, the Gemara tells us, is muta on Shabbos. Gemara in Shabbos Kufchov on the base. Many of us have just learned it in Daphne Yomi a week ago. The Gemara learns from possibly Sasakal Malacha, because the Torah expresses itself in this way, like Sasakal Malacha, says the Gemara, Asiya Osa Groma Muta. Groma is Muta. Now, the Ramah says, well, before the Ramah, says the Gemara, there's a, a fire starts on Shabbos, and some Lacha de Raisa of Kiboy on Shabbos. So what do you do, says the Gemara? You place water all the way around it, and then eventually when the fire will get to the water, it will be put out by the water, extinguished. This is Gram Kiboy, and the Gemara says you could do this on Shabbos, because the Torah says the Sazak or Malacha, Groma is Muta. The Ramah in Ilha Shabbos says that the head of Groma is only Bamakim Hefsut. Just to say Groma is always Muta on Shabbos, that we can't say. For Hefsut, it's Muta. So, arguably, we could say that for Choylem and their need to bring a light or a doctor or whatever it might be, it might be the same as a Mokim Hefsut. Or otherwise, we could say that for Mokim Hefsut, we might rely on those who argue on the Ramah. As upon him, for the Choyla, we would allow a Malacha to be done with the Grom. 
So the idea is, the simplest idea, which is already many, many years old, is let's develop machinery which works with a grommer. Instead of switching, pressing the button, and the light goes on, and the bell goes, and the phone is answered, we'll make an arrangement, we'll set it up, the electrics in a way that whatever you're going to press, the button, the switch, nothing's going to happen immediately. But it's going to have the effect that in a minute's time, the electric function is going to happen. So the Choyle does something on Shabbos. It's only going to work with a Groma. And the Groma says, Groma is water. That's the great idea. That's a brilliant idea. Now, Rishim Zalman in Mincha Shleima discusses this idea. And in his first tshuva, he brings a bunch of rayas that is not allowed. What's his cheshbon? What's Rishim Zalman say? He says that the head of Groma is only if I happen to make something work with the Groma. A fire broke out. I surrounded it with water, and a Groma situation developed. But if I create a constant Groma situation, then there's no head of Groma. In other words, Groma is not good enough that it's causative. The head of Groma is not merely the fact that I did something and it had an effect a minute later. If it has an effect a minute later, and that's different. That's a shinui. That's a change. That's unusual. If it's unusual for things to take place a minute later, then the Torah says, the sasakal malacha, groma is muta. Because groma, which takes place later in an unusual way, that's what the Gemara allows. However, says Rabbi Shem if I were to create a situation exactly like the Gemara's, Every time you make a fire, there's a machine which has a fire. It's surrounded with water. And every time a fire goes on, I pour water. And a minute later, the water extinguishes the fire. Says Rav Shem Zalman, if you do that, you've done a malacha de raisa on Shabbos. When the Torah says the sasaka malacha, it includes something which happens a minute later. What doesn't it include? It doesn't include something which is unusual to happen a minute later. But as soon as you create a machine which takes effect a minute later, that's not called grom. That's Rishim Zalman's Chiddush. And in his first true, he brings five rayas to this Yisrael. His first and his major raya is from the Gemara and Shabbos, Daphne and Gimel. The Gemara there is talking about the Issa of Mavatl Klime Echomer. A keli, a regular keli, you have a dish, you can use it on Shabbos, you can move it on Shabbos. If it becomes mukta on Shabbos, then you've destroyed the keli, temporarily, till not Shabbos. This is considered by the Gemara, if you take a keli and you make it mukta, then you destroyed the keli. You've been over on the Issa of Soisa. This is an Issa Drabonon called Novatl Kli Mehechonai. If I take something Mukta, however I did, and put it into a Kedi, and in that way the Kedi became Mukta because it's a bosses for the Mukta, then I was over on the Issa of Saisa. I destroyed the Kedi. Because of this, says the Gemara, that I can't put a dish underneath a chicken. Because in two hours' time, the chicken is going to lay an egg. An egg which is laid on Shabbos is called Neulat. It's a very strict form of Muktza. It came into the world on Shabbos. And not only the egg is Muktza, but the dish will become unusable. It says the Gemara on Shabbos, Mem Gimel, that you're not allowed to do this on Shabbos. Frekter B'Shem Zalman. What's the grace of Vera? If I put the dish there and in two hours' time, it's going to become Muktza. That's a grammar. It's like putting water around the fire. Elamai says of Shem Zalman. How could we be miyash of the steer? That in Shabbos, that Kuf Chofam it says that you put water around a fire is permitted. And the Gemara in Shabbos, that Mem Gimel says that to put a dish underneath a 
a chicken is also. And Rav Shem says, don't tell me that the reason is because the Ramah says that it's also, unless it's Ramokim, Hefzad like the fire, because he brings rias that even Ramokim Hefzad, you're not allowed to put your dish underneath the chicken. But why is it also? Elamai says of Shem Zalman, we have to say that because this is the normal way of catching eggs, therefore it's forbidden, even though it takes place much later. By extension of the same thing, says Rav Shema Zalman, if you create a keli, which this is the way it's created to function, that things take place, delayed action, but this is the way this keli functions, that's going to be the same as Shabbos Naf Mem Gimel, and not the same as Shabbos Taf Kuf and therefore will be forbidden. He brings other rias, Rav Shem Zalman, from the Morgan of Rome, and Ilchus Tzeda. There's a dog running after whichever little animal he wants to catch, but the animal is fast, and the dog can't catch it. So I'm going to stand behind this creature, block off his ability to run away, and because of that, the dog's going to catch him. Says the Gemara, that's also considered to be Seder. Shrekim Shem Zalman, same thing. What did I do? I did nothing more than a grammar. Why is it forbidden? LMI, that's the way to catch a creature. You have a dog and a man standing there obstructing him. That's the way to catch him. Then he brings other eyes from Rashi Neri Ben Daf Peches. Fellow's pouring water in his own garden and it's going to roll out, out of his chotzer into the net, into the shusayachit. So he's causing malecha soitzah to happen. Why isn't that called groma? Teretz is. Because it's, it's usual, it's a normal thing to do. Anything which is normal is not included in the isa, in the heta of groma. Another I brings from Gemara Moikot and Dafkid Base that fellow takes his animal intentionally takes his cow into a field because this is a field where he wants to plant something and he wants manure in the field. So by taking his cow into there, he's enabling the field to become fertilized and then be, things will start to grow. Still only a grom. So we mentioned four out of Rav Shem Zalman's rise and they all lead to the same maskonas as Rav Shem Zalman, that something which the derech is to do it in this way, there's no het of grom. And because of this, he writes in his first tshuva, even if you are going to make for me a keli, which works, is designed to work with a grammar, you press the button, and a minute later, the light goes on. But by virtue of the fact that you created this in a commercial way, in a way that works every time, then it becomes a normal thing. And if it's normal, there's no head of grammar. That's Rav Shem Zalman in his first initial Tshuva, where he doesn't allow this. Now, the truth is that before we go on, we have to say that before Rav Shem Zama wrote this already, Rav Chaim Moiser writes this in Achiezer, Chele Gimel Simen Samach Aleph, I think it is, and Rav Chaim Moiser brings Kam of Kam Arayas to this Yisoyed, and perhaps after Rav Shem Zama wrote this, the Chazanish and Baba Kama writes the same thing. This is a Yisoyed, which is written in Rav Shem Zalman, and Rav Chaim Oiza, and the Chazanish. Unfortunately, we haven't got the time now for the Rias, which Rav Chaim Oiza brings to this Yisoyed, which really would have been there Geshmak, if we would have had time for it, but unfortunately we haven't. Rav Shem Zalman, in a later tshuva, changed his mind. And He's doich all his rice. And it's very clear in Rav Shemazan's Ksavim that he spent a long time toying about this idea, whether this is so it is right. In a later tshuva, he goes through the rice and he's doich the rice. And he says, no, grama is always mutter. And even if it's designed to work in this way, grama is mutter. I, I brought you rice. So the first raya from Mavazu Chlimei Echonoi, 
Rabbi Shimon Zalman says a, a chiddush, which the Tashem when we learn it as Mukta is important to remember, that Rabbi Shimon Zalman says that the Issa of Mavatul Kli Meichonoi, although it comes under the title of destroying the Kali, but it's actually an Issa Drabbonon in its own right. And it has its own rules. And it's not governed by regular Elfa Shabbos. Although the reason why they enacted this Issa is because of Saisa Kedi, but it could be that at the end of the day, the Issa of Mavatul Kli Meichonoi is actually stricter than the original Issa of Saisa Kli. Saisa Kli is governed by the regular demon of the Torah, Besasa Komarocha Grom of Muta. Once Chazal enacted an Issa of Vatl Kli Meichonoi, even a Groma is included in their Issa. What do we do about the Morgan of Rome and Hilchus Seder? So Shem Zaman interestingly says that perhaps Seder is different because since Seder is very often, or perhaps by definition, is you set a trap and sometime over Shabbos it's going to chap the mouse. So Seder is different than the other Lama Tesmerachas. The Malacha of catching, of trapping animals is a Malacha which always has a delayed function. And therefore, if you stand in the way of that creature and because of that you enable the, the dog to catch him, that's why there's no heta of Groma. Because Tzedah doesn't have a head of Grom. That's Rabbi Shimon Zalman's... Uh, do you mind? That's Rabbi Shimon Zalman. Are you okay without the line? Thank you, thank you. That's Rabbi Shimon Zalman's Dichri on the Rai. It's interesting to note that the Mishnah Brura in Simon Shintet Zayn's of Kotten Yudala, I think it is, quotes this Morgan of Ram. And in the Sharat he asks, what about Groma? And... You can discuss what he answers over there in the Sharetzian, but in his Sharetzian over there is mashma that he says that a rule in Hilchus Groma are not something specific in the Malach of Tzeda like Rav Shema Zalman. In other words, it would be mashma more from the Mishnah Brura that he holds like Rav Chaim and the Chazanish that uh, um, not only Tzeda but other Malachas as well, if they're designed to work with the delayed action, then they will be also. But Al Kaponim is what Shem Zalman is matra. What about the raya from the Gemara Moed Cotton by pouring manure over a table, over the, over the man, fertilizing the field? So Shem Zalman brings in a Muki Yosef in Moed Cotton. Muki Yosef says in Rechanama, it's not really a malocha of Zereya or Chayresh when you bring your animal in there and eventually make a grommer of a malocha, but it's nearer. It looks like the person is involved in fertilizing his field. That's the Namukiyosa. So there's no cash anymore of grommer. What do we do about the rye of pouring water out? Rishim Zalman discusses it. I asked Mechila from Tzibur that we're not able to go through this subject well. At the end of the day, this is a very major discussion. Some will allow a Kali which is designed to work in a Groma way, like Rav Shema Zalman after with Choyza, and others won't allow it because of Rav Chaim Oiza and the Chazanish, and perhaps others who hold that such a thing is not included in the Heta of Groma. So we've got to, ideally we're looking for a better Eitzah. So the better Eitzah, uh, Lechayra, will be to design a keli in a way which is called in the Lashon of the Paskin, Menias Mania. Menias Mania means as follows. A regular circuit is a one circuit. When the circuit is complete, the light goes on. What does the switch do? It completes the circuit. If I'm going to design a circuit and as the circuit is completed, it'll be completed in two ways. And the electricity will have the option of traveling in one direction or the other. 
and I'll make the default of this machine that the electricity will always run along one of the wires. Why? Because it's a better, uh, it, it, it's easier for electricity to run along there. It contains, it's made of a material which holds electricity easier. So I created something which is constantly drawing away electricity from the other circuit. So the other circuit can never close. What do we do now? We might put the switch in the better condensed electricity. We put the switch in the circuit, which is, so to speak, stealing the electricity from the light circuit that will make the light go on. When I press the button, I have nothing to do with the light. All that I'm doing is breaking a circuit. When I break the circuit, the electricity, which is running at all times, can't run through this anymore. So he looks for somewhere to go to. Where would he find to go? There's another circuit line there. So the electricity, because he's not able to run through my circuit, will go through the other circuit. Where did he find himself? In the circuit of the light or the bell or whatever it might be. And lo and behold, the light goes on. But I didn't touch the circuit which makes the light go on. All I did was I took away the other circuit which is stopping the electricity going to the light. This is a concept known in Aloha as manias mania. I withheld something which is withholding something from happening. The marshal of this in Shulchan Aruch and Simon Reisha in Zion comes from a Toysus. And it's Aloha Psuk in Shulchan Aruch. It's a part of the dim which everyone agrees to. There's a, a light on in the house. A candle is burning. And the door is open. There's a wind howling outside. That wind is going to blow into the house and put out the fire. But I want the light to stay on. So I close the door. By closing the door, I didn't put the light on. I closed the door. I held back the wind that it shouldn't be able to have any effect on the candle in the house. That's called manias mania. The result is the same. The candle burns. But says the Mishnah Buru, the Torah didn't forbid results. The Torah forbade a Misa. I didn't do any Misa. What I did had nothing to do with the candle burning. All that I did was I held back the wind from disturbing. So we would like to now design a machine which works with a double circuit. And my button is going to do what? Is going to stop the electricity running along another circuit, and in that way, it'll automatically go and put on the light. Minyas minyas. The chayre, but sif mofor, it should be allowed. The beauty of this idea is, if it works halakhically, if it's a good idea, then the reason why it's muta is not because it's grom. The reason why it's muta is because I did nothing in the eyes of the Torah. If that's the case, then it doesn't matter even if it's designed this way. If the reason why you want to allow something is because it's grammar, then you have a Rabchai Moizander, Chazanish, and originally Rabchai Shemizalman who shouted and they said, if you create a machine to function in this way, that's not called a grom. But if we can allow this because of Maniyas Maniya, then that's the reason it's because I did nothing. If I did nothing, so what do you care that I designed a machine to work in this way? It's still going to be allowed. I didn't do a at all. That's the, the beauty of the idea. If you look at the Shemir Shabbos, Kachosa, various of, wherever he discusses it, Rabbi Neuvert, and you'll see all the time, whenever there's a discussion of grammar, there's a problem because Rishon Zalman says it was designed this way. Rabbi Chaim Oiza doesn't like it. But as soon as you're dealing with the Meniyas Meniyah, who cares? It was designed to work this way. Now, in truth, this idea, Lechayra, in its original form, 
was discussed already long before we wanted to make machines which work to put lights on and bells on for Chaylin. The original idea for this is for those who remember a manual mechanical time switch. So you had your lights or air conditioning, whatever it might be, and you didn't want it running all the time. So you inserted a mechanical time switch which had teeth or little pieces. And as it came to that piece, the piece, the teeth put the machine on and the machine off as you wish to do. Now, the teeth in this machine turn the machine off. So I have the light on and it's set to go off at two o'clock in the afternoon, but I want it to stay on. So what's the eta? At one o'clock, I see that there's a, we're turning around and this little tooth in the time switch is going to click and going to take away the electricity and then the light will go off. So the plan is I'm going to move the next three teeth. That way I stop them coming and putting off the electricity and lo and behold, my light is on for the next hour. That's the brilliant idea. And this brilliant idea was asked to Ramosha Feinstein in Igris Moshe, in Ayachayim and in Yeridea, two tshuvas about you have a machine, it's on, it's going to be put off by a time switch, and I'm going to move the teeth that it shouldn't put off the function. And Ramosha in both tshuvas doesn't allow it. Now, he doesn't go into major discussion as to why he doesn't allow it. And I'd like to discuss a little bit his probable reason. The simplest understanding of, of, of Ramosha's reason is because he holds that a time switch is an integral part of the machine. In Allah, you can't look at a light and say, well, the light is set to burn the whole of Shabbos the air conditioning could be on the whole of Shabbos. There happens to be this little tooth which is going to get in the way. So I'm going to get in the way of the thing which is getting in the way. Says Ramosha, no. If you put a time switch into a socket, then you've made a machine which can only stay on till two o'clock. That's what this machine now is. Changing the teeth is giving it new, fresh life. Can't be compared to the wind howling outside and closing the door. That's the simplest understanding of Ramosha's reason. Perhaps we can still sue to this that Tesis in Babakama Dafyu Zion on the base says that if a fellow threw a Kali from the 10th floor, it's going to break right when it hits the floor. If I come and break it before it hits the floor, Says the Gemara, that's a monotvira tava. It's already considered to be broken uh, as soon as it left the door. However, says Toysus, tava posh, says Toysus, if Reuven shoots an arrow and it's going to bash into the Kali and break it, it's not yet called a monotvira. And if afterwards Shimon comes and breaks it, he's chayat. Why? What's the difference? In, 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 in truth, the Kali is going to break at the same time anyway. But, says Toysus, there's a difference whether you're attacking the Kali externally or whether the Kali itself is moving and is going to break itself. So perhaps this is the Avona in Rabbeishu who says that if there's something connected to the Kali, it's considered to be part of the Kali already. Perhaps other rise to this you said as well. Now, there is another time on the idea of Maniyas Maniya. And that is that everything we discussed so far is built on an understanding that you're allowed to close the door and keep the wind out because of Maniyas Maniya. That's not called doing anything. And that would seem to be the way the Mishnah Brewer explains the din of Maniyas Maniya in Simon Reishain's eye and closing the door. However, 
many Achroin bring the Ravosh. The Ravosh quotes the same din <coughs> in the same Toysus in Shabbos Tafkufcha, which says that you're allowed to close the window or the door, even though it means that the light is going to stay on. Says the Ravosh, because it's not a sick ratio, it's not for sure that the wind is going to have an effect on the handle, and it's not for sure that you're closing the door is going to have the opposite effect. It all spakers. Might be, might not be. It's more likely, less likely. That's the reason, says the Ravosh, why it's permitted. Is Mavur in the Ravosh that he doesn't agree to this whole Torah of Maniyas Maniyah. This whole idea of Maniyas Maniyah, the Ravosh doesn't seem to agree with it. The Ravosh seems to hold that Maniyas Maniyah is Asa and is only allowed because it's not a Psikratia. So we have a Machloikas. So again, if I made a machine which works with a grama, so I have one machloikas. If I made a machine which works with manias mania, then I have a different machloikas. So again, perhaps for a the rabbi might say, you can rely on those who are makal in grama, you can rely on those who are makal in manias mania, but we haven't created something which is going to be glat and mutter according to all opinions Bain with the Grom idea and Bain with Manias Mania. However, only Le Pilpul, not La Rocha Maisa, I'd like to make a suggestion, Rabbi Isai, and I'm happy to hear Oris on this. And that's as follows. We learned already and we discussed that the Torah allowed Grom. And there's a major machloikas in the as to the understanding of what the head of Grom is. He pours water all the way around the fire. And that's clear in the Gemara Tzmuta. Rabbi Shabbat Zaman in Maskana learns what's the heta. The mere fact that it doesn't happen immediately, that's grammar. It takes time till it happens. It is the normal, it's not normal, it's usual, it's unusual, it's irrelevant. It's not a heta of shinui. It's a heta of grammar. Those who are choyluk hold that what? Grama essentially is forbidden. So why does the Gemara allow pouring water around the fire? It's different. In other words, the head of Grama is the fact that it's different. So now comes the Mori Kiddush, I would say. Lichoira, the Shaila of the Lavush and the Mishnah Brura by Maniyas Maniya is going to be very similar. That means if you hold that the head of Groma is because it's different, it's unusual, then it stands to reason that Maniyas Maniyah is also very unusual. Not the way people do Malachas. It might have exactly the same effect. But if you hold that the head of Groma is the fact that it's a Shinoi, then that Shinoi should allow Maniyas Maniyah. Elamai, why does the Levush hold the Maniyas Maniyah is also? Lichoira, it must be because the Levush hold that when the Torah allowed Groma, it's like Rav Shema Zalman. Groma is a new etta because it takes time. Nothing to do with the Shinoi. So when you make a Shinoi because you use your left hand to write and it looks different, that's a general din of Shinoi. But to make a Shinoi in the Malacha, the Levush holds there's no etta in a Shinoi in the Malacha. The head of Groma is the delayed action. If we're right, it comes out as follows. That the two machloiksen of Groma, when it's built to work that way, and the machloikas of Maniyas Maniyah is one machloikas. What was the pshat when the Torah gave you a heta of Groma? Is it mutter because it's delayed? Or is it mutter because it's strange, it's unusual, it's different? What's What happens if I'm going to marry both of these Ethereum together? I'm going to make a switch. I'm not saying Allah Khalamaisa Only for discussion Allah. I'm going to make a switch which has tarantilativusa, but two minus. Number one, you press a button and nothing happens. There's a delayed action, then a minute later something happens. And what happens a minute later? 
it then, a minute later, is going to break the circuit, which is drawing away electricity and will result in the light going on. So what do we have over here? We have combined both at a, a grommer for the choyle and a minyas minya. There's a grace of Mokim to say that when you do make such a switch, it's going to be mutter l'kulei alma. Reb Shemazalma will tell you it's mutter because you pressed the button and a minute later it had an effect. Are you designed it this way? I don't care. It's a grama. Who argues with Reb Shemazalma? Reb Chemeza, Chazanish. They say the head of grama is only because it's unusual. So you press the button and it's designed to work that a minute later it should take an effect. So there's no head of grama. Okay, brilliant. But if that's how you understand grama, that because it's different, it's muta, then your Reb Chaim Moise is going to agree to the head of the Mishnah Brura of Maniyas Maniyah. I designed this in a way that a minute later it's going to take away electricity, which will result in the second circuit going on. There's a grace of Mokim to say that if you make a grama and a Maniyas Maniyah, it might be Mutter L'chol I would, would have liked to have said a lot more over here, my Rabbi Sai, but I want to mention one or two little Makudas while we're talking. Number one, in this whole discussion, there have been those who discuss, let's make for the Chayla, make it a Drabonim for another reason, because he'll press the button with his left hand, his left finger. Now, the first thing is, that the Mishibura says, only in Ksiva there's a heta, a kula of smoil, to shinu. It's not a shinu in other malachas. Secondly, and perhaps more to the point, Ramosha writes in Ebna Ezra, Chelik Dalad, Simonai and Gimel, that even in Ksiva itself, he says, if you type with your left hand on a computer or on a typewriter he was discussing, then there's no heta in the left. The left is only writing which looks different with the left hand, then there's a hatter with left hand. But left hand on a computer and left hand on Elva Malachas is not a rabbach at all. Second akud is, we discussed earlier whether the hatter of Gromer applies even if it's designed in this way. Now, there are Achroinim who bring a raya in this shaila from the Yadrama. The Adrama, which Yididin Arav Rav Shlita mentioned in his wonderful Shia, discusses the Gemara in Sanhedrin of a Bidka Damai. He opened up the dam, the water came cascading out and was mazik or killed somebody. So Gemara says it's high. So the Adrama there asks Akasha and he says, whatever happened, it wasn't from my koyach. I didn't give it the strength, I didn't give it the power, I didn't give it the energy, I didn't create the energy at all. It wasn't my hand that killed him, it wasn't my hand that was magic, it was the power of the water. Says the Adrama, it doesn't matter. That's also called a Ritzach, even if you didn't use your energy. What's the Raya, says the Yadrama, from every bow and arrow. We all agree that if you shoot an arrow and you kill somebody, you're high. This arrow, I didn't give it energy. All that I did was I pulled the bow tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter till it had such incredible force that when I left go of the bow, it shot the arrow. Says the Adrama, it didn't work from my curve, it worked from the curve of the bow. And nevertheless, you're high. If so, says the Adrama, the same applies to the dam. Fregging the Achronim. If Reb Chaim Moiz and the Chazanish are right, that something which is designed to work in this way doesn't have a head of Groma. So the biggest marshal you can have for this is a bow and arrow. The bow and arrow is designed that you should pull the bow, and in that way, the bow kills the fellow. So there's no Groma involved in a bow and arrow. In the Yad Ramah, what happened? The fellow came along to a dam. It wasn't designed to kill people. He moved away the dam and he killed. How can the Yad Ramah compare the dam to the bow now? Elamai, you see from the Yad Ramah that he's not machalak between something designed or not designed. 
That's the Torah of some Akhrayin about the cash. But the Chayra is no Tzushal at all. The Rabbi Chaim Moise and the Chazanish, Rabbi Shem Zalman, they are discussing the head of Gromer. In Gromer specifically, there are those who hold that a Gromer, which is designed to work in this way, that's not called Gromer. The head of Gromer is the Shinu. And if it's designed to, that way, to work that way, it's not called a Gromer. The Yadramah is not discussing Gromer at all. The Yadramah's problem is, it's not my Koyach. Maybe the Torah was only Mechai of me if it's my energy. I created the energy. If that would be true, then there's no difference whether it's designed to work that way, not designed to that work. In the Maizu, you didn't use my energy. So, says the Yadramah, I have a ride that even without your energy, you have. Then if that's your ride, it makes no difference if the bow and arrow or whether it's releasing the dam, it's going to be the same. Maybe to help them. In the Zchus of Limud HaToyra, in the Zchus of Limud, Hilcha Shabbos, a bunch of bench, all of us to be Mekayim, the Mitzvahs of Shabbos, the way we are meant to, and we should be Zoycha, that the Shefa of Kedusha and Atzlocha should come to each and every one of us, Lonu, Ulechol Yisrael, wherever they might be.